Hey everyone, so I was troubleshooting the memory board for my KA650 VAX and figured I'd take a video to kind of explain how I'm going about the uh, finding the bad DRAMs here. So I've got my uh, KA650 set up here on a little uh, test backplane I wrapped together out of uh, some four slot QBus connectors. So the KA650 is back here and the MS650 memory boards up here in the front so I can get to all the connections on the back and uh, got my HP 16700A logic analyzer there uh, hooked up to the monitor up here and I got the VT330 set up as the console for the KA650 so go ahead and give that a second to initialize and I'll go over uh, just the general architecture of the MS650 here. So this is the 8 meg board which I believe is the MS650-AA uh, and it consists of 312 these little guys 256K by 1 zip DRAMs so there's a lot of them on there and it's organized as 256k by 39 banks, uh, 32 data and 7 bits of ECC. And there are eight of those banks, and each of them corresponds to approximately, you know, like one megabyte of memory on the VAX. So, got my logic analyzer hooked up. You know, these are wire wrap sockets, so they've got all these long pins, and I was just able to get. Uh, using the KA650 print set, was able to get the pin out for all this stuff and hook up my logic analyzer to basically the entire memory bus. Up here's the uh, data bus for the memory, and I've got all the logic analyzer probes hooked up there. So, go ahead and turn on the KA650, and I'll boot up here. I speak English. We'll run through its normal tests, and the interesting thing is that none of these fail. But that doesn't mean the RAM isn't bad, that just means these tests are not thorough enough. So once it's done here, it should say that it completed all the tests normally. Yep. So, here's the thing. Let's get a list of the tests here. I believe it's 9E, yeah. So there's several memory tests that it can do, and I'm not entirely sure which ones it runs on boot up, but some of these don't catch the memory errors. Like for example, 4F here. You'll notice that there's a lot of options for 4F. 4F has a start address, an end address, and address increment, and continue on error. Um, basically, I think its default address increment is too large to catch all the errors and on the other hand if you give it an increment of like one or a really small number it'll basically take a really long time to actually complete but what we can do is run test 4f we'll start at zero and basically run until the top of memory and it won't get there but we'll run with an increment of uh, 200 which is 512 bytes in decimal that should be enough to catch these errors I'm having. So this will take a little bit before it gets there because I have uh, fixed some of the memory errors already. There it goes. So this is a bunch of information that the test outputs. I don't exactly know how to interpret it for this particular test, although I did kind of reverse engineer one of the other tests. Uh, so we won't look at this too much in depth, but you can get certain pieces of information from this, like for example R1 here happens to be the address it failed at, and um, aside from that, there is in theory some other information encoded in here, like P9 is probably the address you would look at if you were a uh, like if you were deck personnel looking through a listing of the KA650 tests, you would go find address 51D1D, 
and you'd look in the comments there and it would probably tell you how to interpret uh, all these values and what they actually mean and uh, basically narrow down the failure for you or enough that you can then go you know, research it on your own and find the exact point of failure and, and fix this RAM card. Uh, so like I said, I'm not entirely sure how to interpret all the uh, parameters that this test outputs, but one that I do know, and this is how I found the failures in the first place, uh, is that test 48 fails without having to give it any extra parameters. And this is uh, mem underscore adder underscore shorts test, which I assume would try and test uh, in such a way that it will um, see shorted address lines, whether they're shorted together or uh, shorted to ground or high or whatever, because basically you could write to one address and then you read at another address, but due to the shorted address line, when you read at that second address, you actually end up reading the first address, which you had overwritten. But basically I was able to reverse engineer the test, uh, this test enough that I can kind of figure out what's going on. So the important things to look at here are again, R1 has our failure address, it's still that 1DB800. Another thing I know is that P8 stores the um, memory controller error register value, which describes the last um, well, not necessarily the last, but the most fatal error that the memory controller has seen. Uh, that's also the most recent within, you know, because it, it kind of prioritizes like an uncorrectable error. It'll uh, record there. And if later a correctable error happens, it'll, it won't overwrite the uncorrectable error. But I think if multiple correctable errors occur then it'll overwrite with the most recent one and that kind of thing. But basically, you know, that has a meaning. And I know that the 2 there basically means we had a 1-bit correctable ECC error. So the uh, memory value is actually corrected. And so something we can actually look at is, where is it here? The R0 was what it actually wrote that memory location with. So if we examine... Uh, let's see, 1db800, it actually gives us, you know, this full, uh, whatever it wrote here, and the other way to uh, check that error register is uh, test 9c. Now, this is reading the error register directly. You should note that test 48 actually clears out many of the bits in here, so this 2 would not have been set uh, because it clears that, but the middle bits here correspond to the page in memory that had the error, and the uh, very last seven bits here correspond to which bit had the error. So if we go over to the KA650 architecture manual here, that uh, the last seven bits there were 6E, which is 110, one 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 zero. So this row right here, meaning that bit eleven had an error. And so another thing we can do before we go on is we can confirm that this error is actually repeatable. So if we clear out the memory controller uh, status register there, which is that address and we clear it by writing it with ones. So now if you run 9c you'll notice that the 2 here in, in that register has gone away. So we cleared that error. We can uh, read that address again, that 1db800 and that error is back. So we've got some kind of stuck bit probably in this position. And I went through every single DRAM on this card, all 312 of them, and I figured out exactly which DRAMs did what, and I came up with kind of a grid system to 
uh, keep track of them, but this is in the first megabyte here because the address uh, is 1db800. So that's, I'm sorry, it's it's first megabyte, but it's after the zero. So it's really the second megabyte, but it's, you know, address is starting with a one. So if we find that uh, in here, it's the data bit, the 11th data bit, and it's in the second megabyte. So for example here, we can see from my notes, if this would ever focus, that it's uh, D11. Now that corresponds to column D and the 11th row, which means that I'm clipped on to that uh, DRAM right here with the logic analyzer. I've got the column address strobe and the row address strobe as well as the data line. So if we go up to the logic analyzer here and I try and focus this so that you can actually read what's on the screen. Uh, from top to bottom we've got uh, starting with the memory bus we've got the data bus and we've got the ECC bits mostly because the logic analyzer only lets you define uh, up to 32-bit groupings. So I couldn't do all 39 bits of the data bus in a single label, uh, so I had to separate them. There's MD for memory data, there's MD ECC for the ECC bits, MA is the multiplexed address bus. Uh, so DRAMs have column addresses and row addresses, and they're strobed in on uh, different, different edges, the row address strobe and the column address strobe. Then we've got the CAS lines from the memory controller and all the RAS lines from the memory controller. There's four of each, and between each pairing, the memory con uh, controller can drive um, 16 banks of RAM. And so that is what uh, defines the maximum memory capacity of the KA650s that the memory controller can address 16 banks of DRAM, and each bank can be um, <clears throat> up to 1 meg by 39, uh, which would give you 4 meg uh, per bank after ECC overhead, basically, uh, resulting in your 64 meg overall maximum memory capacity. Uh, below that, we have the right enable pin, and we have SE, which I'm not entirely sure what it's for, but it seems to only ever be asserted during a refresh cycle. Uh, we have the memory clocks, and then at the bottom we have those three lines that I hooked up to the DRAM. They're labeled DUT RAS, DUT CAS, and DUT data for device under test. And then it's those three lines. So the last thing it triggered on here basically was me reading 1DB800. So if you actually lined up, you know, the row address and the column address. And, uh, oh, the other thing is XA20 and 21 there are for when you're driving uh, 256K uh, DRAMs. So you break each um, 1 meg bank into 4 meg ranks, I'll call them. And each rank is 256K by whatever, 39. And so those two bits let you select which of the four ranks within a bank you actually um, strobe. So, if we look here at the bottom though, you'll see that both uh, CAS and RAS went low for a time and then back high, signifying that this DRAM was actually accessed. DUT data, when I read it, uh, was a 1. And if you look at the data there at the top, we have 45555D55. Now the D is actually that this uh, RAM chip is stuck high. It should have read as 45555555. So that DRAM is actually stuck high. So this DRAM right here is the one I'm going to have to pull. Uh, and it's the, uh, this will be the fifth one I've had to replace on this board. So I'm slowly working my way through here. And I'm not quite 25% uh, of the way through the memory in theory. So uh, and then lastly I'm going to have to run test 4F again which and probably all these tests for that matter. I'm going to have to go in here and go through all these tests because now I don't trust it 
So I'm going to have to go through here and run all these memory tests and very carefully make sure that I specify the options so that they actually run through all of memory and actually test everything rather than just, you know, random samples from within. Uh, because clearly there are some tests that aren't as thorough as I'd like them to be. Uh, the trade-off being that they don't take like three hours to run that way. So probably going to, uh, once I finally get this all finished up, I'll probably run test uh, 4F. And I'll go ahead and make sure I set the increment there to 1. And let that run like overnight or however long it takes but for the moment I'm just going through and I'm running uh, 48 to see if that detects anything and if it does then I go ahead and uh, pull that DRAM and put a, a new one in its place now that's the other thing I don't actually have a new one so it's gonna be hard to see but I've got this this other surface mount DRAM kludged in there and you can see all the 30 gauge Kynar kind of at this angle and it's really uh, kludged in there because I didn't have any zip DRAMs. I'm just trying to get this going and then I'll know how many I need to buy and then I can buy them and then I can replace them and then hopefully it doesn't end up costing me more than buying you know an entire MS650 or something because that'd be ludicrous but you know how this can go. So I think that's everything. Uh, let me check my list. I had a list of stuff I wanted to go through and then yeah, let's see. I explain the setup. I explain the issue. I explain how test 4F doesn't catch stuff. 48 does. Uh, and I demonstrated confirming the DRAM error by using the console, the monitor program, deposit and examine, and looking at the memory controller error register, looking at the logic analyzer, etc. So that's all I have for now. I'm going to keep plugging away at this and hopefully I'll get the whole thing fixed up.